Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only Sovereign and Lord. For they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. I've told people who are trying to smoke, uh, trying to quit smoking, to pray while they smoke. You know, see, a lot of times what people do is they hide themselves when they sin. They hide themselves when they do what they think is sin. I'm not saying smoking is sin, but they're doing something that's bothering their conscience. So therefore, to them, it is sin. Right? It's not a faith, and so they hide from God while they're doing that thing, and then they wait a while for until they've repented sufficiently or whatever they think it is that they need to do. Then they come crawling back to God. And then in that whole time, they're just getting devoured. Now, why don't you get your cigarette out, light it, put it in your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. You know, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the spirit. Thank you that I'm a son and an heir. Thank you that I'm not disqualified. Thank you for the, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I have peace with God through my Lord Jesus Christ. Between puffs and see what happens. I've seen it, some people stop smoking. Other people learn the mercy of God in their weakness. You know, he's, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He is not here to lay a burden on you. There is no burden. He's here to take the burden off of you. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, and again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Now, why don't you get your cigarette out, light it, put it in your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, for your blood. It's between puffs and see what happens.